Hi everyone, I'm Justin. I'm a software engineer, an amateur musician, tinkerer, I do things. And I was trying to figure out what the best thing to talk to a JavaScript group is. So I just tell everyone that I think desktop applications are the future. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you know, if I've got something like a, a, I don't know, a Slack client or a text editor or something, I think this should be a native application. It needs to run all day. It should use as little memory as possible. So I decided to make a little game about the very important topic of my um, you know, pug being woken up by the Pomeranian. Where's my cursor? There's my cursor. I decided that a native desktop application was the way to go in my favorite programming language, which is Rust. Oh, no. <laughs> it's actually harder than you'd think to play a game on a screen over there while talking. <laughs> You get exponentially more Pomeranians coming at you until eventually you <laughs> lose it. So this is really this is super work in progress. You know, nothing's animated. The cursor is sort of temporary, but that's it, it's irrelevant. The the problem with desktop applications, the problem with this, is that it's really difficult for me to take it and share it with people. I mean, you can say, hey, you know, install this thing. I've got it on a flash drive. I promise it's not malicious. Um, but like the really easy way to share things, the way that we've been sharing games on the web pages is here's this link and you go there and traditionally it opened up like Flash or something. But, but, but there's newer ways. And so what I've also got running in the background, let me close this. And just to show my hypocrisy, the presentation is actually in the web browser as well. <laughs> is this is exactly the same game from the same code base, building to run in a web browser instead of as a native desktop application. Now, so how does this all work? That's what I'm going to get and transition. So move the cursor out of the way. The main, first at the beginning, I told you that this was a Rust game. Uh, what is Rust? Rust is a programming language meant to be a drop-in replacement for C and C++ because we're not really sure if anyone wants to work in C and C++ anymore. <laughs> because languages have a lot of foot guns, which is features that make it easy to shoot yourself in the foot. And um, they still have their place, though. You, know, you want something that can compile and end up with what C++ calls the zero-cost abstractions, where you don't pay a runtime cost for your higher-level language features. And you can take it and throw it on the microcontroller, or you can get all of the performance benefits that you'd need to write a high-end game engine. And Rust gives you those benefits and the higher-level things, but it's got a very smart compiler, so it picks up things like um, the possibility of race conditions by being very strict about what is mutable data, what is immutable data. And this is the basic flow that you have with, well, both C++ and Rust, is you've got your nice little code, you pass it through a compiler, and you get a native executable. So what happens when we want to put this on the web, with WebAssembly, is you've still got uh, Rust, goes through the same compiler, but instead of putting out like an exe or other type of executable, it's this .wasm file. So what is, what is this WebAssembly thing? It's an assembly target for the web. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a great name for what it is. Um, I don't know how many people here um, remember that point where Scott Hanselman was saying that JavaScript is the assembly language of the web, and all of these things can compile to JavaScript. And people were like, oh, maybe JavaScript isn't the best thing to compile to. It's not a great compile target. WebAssembly is the good compile target that comes out of that sort of line of thinking. You take your other languages, you pass them through a compiler, you get out WebAssembly. And that plays well alongside your JavaScript, alongside your CSS and your HTML. That game that's a full screen um, HTML canvas, it's got some WebGL going. It's actually the next slide, WebGL. <laughs> and it's the same code, but it's the JavaScript managing this little um, sandbox that is the WebAssembly. And Something really cool about WebGL, so 
Now, step is it's actually just OpenGL. It's pretending to be a different thing. It's a specific version of OpenGL. So whereas the Rust code, um, the, the desktop version, it's taking the OpenGL shaders that I copied from the internet, <laughs> <laughs> as you do, and it's using that to draw stuff. Um, the WebAssembly one is taking the same shaders, um, pushing it through WebGL, and getting exactly the same images. Okay, so that's sort of one of the other benefits of WebAssembly. And um, there's something that's coming out of Mozilla's talking about WebAssembly and where you'd use it is what they call speed without wizardry. And this um, phrase actually comes from a sort of series of blog posts from the Mozilla um, dev tools, where they rewrote some of it from JavaScript to Rust to compile to WebAssembly. And what they found is that you know, they did this because they needed more performance. And they found the performance patterns that they wanted to express were much easier to express in Rust than in JavaScript. Things like forcing the compiler to actually inline this function and um, I don't know, eagerly compute things. And um, they made it something like five times faster by changing it to you know, WebAssembly code. And then some Google engineer that works on their JavaScript compiler came and said, no, this is nonsense. You can obviously do all of this in JavaScript. And he wrote the most amazing JavaScript that nobody could read. And it had like <laughs> strings. And <laughs> but it, it did actually meet the same performance. You can write high performing code in any language. But it's easier if you're writing it in Rust than if you're writing it in JavaScript. So speed without wizardry. Yeah. So, so I want to get into some of the differences between like the desktop games and the web games. And like the first difference I want to point out is that web pages hate infinite loops. And you, you probably have seen this before where it says the oh, script isn't responding, it's making this web page slow. And I think Mozilla handles it a bit better now where it's like this little red thing at the top rather than a massive pop-up in the middle of the screen that'll stop you from doing anything. But you know, the, the traditional desktop one is you boot it up and you've got an infinite game loop. You know, check what the user has done and then uh, update the game state and then uh, render stuff to the screen. The WebAssembly route, you have to follow the desktop version because JavaScript is all single-threaded. So everything in the WebAssembly side that's single-threaded. So you have to seed control. <laughs> you ask the web browser, you know, request animation frame function call, and you give it a callback and use that to call into your thing. And you need to do that on every frame. Otherwise, everything stops working <laughs> and complains. The other thing is not to forget loading time. I don't actually have a loading bar on that little game there, but you'll find that your performance characteristics of just loading a file are quite different if they're on your hard drive already versus if you're getting them off the internet. Just, just, just something to consider there. Don't forget this. <laughs> yeah. so, um, let me go with this. All right. This WebAssembly thing, it's actually available now, uh, version 1.0, which they call the minimum viable product version. It's everything you need to sort of go, but it doesn't have things like multi-threading. It doesn't have SIMD, which means some of the tricks that you'd use to have high performance code in Rust, like just making it multi-threaded, which is much easier in Rust than it is in C++ because of the whole immutable state avoiding race, um, race conditions thing. Uh, you can't do that with WebAssembly. You're going to be single-threaded. There are plans in a future release to add these things, but you know, for right now, you can't target that. You have to work with a single-thread one. Um, garbage collection is something they're planning. I think, so JavaScript is a garbage collected language, but you know, the WebAssembly doesn't actually expose that. So if you want to take a garbage collected language like C Sharp, and, and people have done this, they call it experimental, you compile the entire runtime, including the C Sharp garbage collector, to WebAssembly. You load up the entire thing as one big WASM file. <laughs> so possible but you're not getting the JavaScript um, garbage collector. <laughs> um, as I said, your, the language support is growing. The sort of premier languages, so, um, C, C++, and 
Rust. Rust actually comes out of a Mozilla project and is highly funded by Mozilla. So they're pushing the WebAssembly thing really hard and um, adding things like trying to make it seamless to take a Rust project, compile to WebAssembly, and upload to NPM. And so, so maybe one day I'll be able to write front-end code <laughs> that is actually just Rust, and nobody will know that I'm not writing JavaScript. <laughs> And you've got other languages. I mentioned the C sharp. There's, there's mostly experimental support is what they call it around there. Even the Rust one, to do the compilation, you need to go through the nightly build of the compiler. It's not in what they call a stable compiler yet. So I mean, it, I found it actually reliable. It's just the APIs might change. Yeah, that's it. The tooling is changing. Best approaches are evolving. Um, if you listen to my DevConf talk a while back, I talked about this crazy way that you needed to um, call stuff in WebAssembly by first creating a pointer with a reference to memory in the WebAssembly space, and then from JavaScript pass the pointer through, and it was probably fine. And the new approach is that there's a tool that generates that boilerplate, so you don't have to look at it because it's scary stuff. So um, the best approaches are being established. Sometimes the tools are a little unstable, but it's a good place to be, and I think it's on the right track, and it's a good time to sort of take a look. And it will run in all major browsers, which is a lot of fun. Yeah. And so that's, that's what I have for you today. Um, does anyone have any questions about WebAssembly or Rust?